In this video, we're going to look at an if statement. Now, the if function is one of the most popular functions in Excel, and it allows you to make logical comparisons between a value and what you expect. So basically, an if statement can have two results. The first result is if your comparison is true. The second, if it's false. And here's how we do it. Looking at this example, we have a list of students and a list of marks. And the pass mark, they have to have received over 50 to pass this exam, otherwise they've failed it. So what I want to show in column C is the word pass or the word fail, depending on what mark is in column B. So here's how we start it. Equals, as we do with any Excel formula or function, start with an equals, equals if. As I start typing, Excel is trying to help me and I can see there the if function is sitting there at the top. I'm just going to um, double click on that and it is now bringing me up how to work through the if statement. So we start with the logical test. What are we testing? We're looking up the mark in column B. So in this case, I want to see this mark here in B3. If that mark is greater than 50, I've set that test, that's what I'm looking for, and when I um, press the comma, say then, it will jump and it's asking me if that's true, essentially what do you want to do next? I want the word pass to show in the cell, so I'm typing the word pass, I'm using text, so I'm using speech marks around it to show that it's text. So if it's true, if it's over 50, then they have passed it. If I do another comma, look what happens, it jumps to value of false is now in bold. If it's not true, if it's not a pass, what is the alternative? The alternative is they failed. So again with speech marks, it's text again, I'm typing in the word fail. Close my speech mark, close my bracket, close my bracket, all right, and then press enter. If you go up and have a look here, you'll see is so if B3 if the mark is greater than 50 it's a pass otherwise it's a fail. I can then copy that down and it will return the correct result depending on the mark they've got. Now there's another way to do it that you might find a wee bit easier and that is by using the, the, essentially the function box. So if I go up to on my ribbon here I'm moving to formulas and I'm going to insert function all right, now, I've got it here, I've, I've been using it already today, but if you don't see it, you just have to type in the word if in the search for a function, press go, and it will bring up anything that's got essentially if in it, and here it is there at the top, and press OK. So what we're doing, we're just building this up in three steps. So our logical test, we're going to click in um, B3 and look at the formula bar along the top. This is now building up the formula here. So what is the test if B3 is greater than 50? All right, if that is true, I want the word pass. Now the difference here is you don't need to type in with the speech marks. All right, otherwise it's going to be a fail. All right, and you'll see there the formula's up there. It had to be typed it from scratch. It's sitting up there, but using the function argument box, it takes it uh, into three steps for you. Press OK, you get the same result. It's just a different way to do it. Now looking here, uh, I'm seeing that I've got Angus here, got 50, and we're showing that he's failed, which really seems a bit unfair because really 50, 50 would be a pass. So let me just move on to the next tab along the bottom here and we're exactly the same thing but this time we're saying they must attain at least 50 to pass. So 50 or better will be a pass. And just to show you if I did equals if, same idea, if open bracket, click on B3, this time instead of just putting the greater than I'm also going to put in the equal sign. So what we're saying is if in B3, if that mark is greater than or exactly 50, then with a comma, if that is true, we want to have the word pass. Otherwise, if it's not a pass, it's a fail. So we just type in the word fail. So that's just showing you an if statement uh, with the greater than or equal to symbol in, in the formula. 
all right and click there and as we copy that down we can see that this time for Angus he got 50 and we're going to give him a pass for that. One more example looking at tab 3 here let's imagine that we're setting the class teachers for a list of pupils going into primary 7 we're, the criteria we're setting the argument we're seeing is if they're in class 7a Mrs Kelly is going to be their teacher otherwise it's Mr Foley and we're wanting to use an if statement in column D. So what I want to do for this example is equals if, always start the same way, open bracket, if what, what are we saying? We're not using greater than, we're not using less than, we're actually looking up this. If that, whatever's in that cell, is 7a. So I have to do equals, with speech marks, 7a. Right, so we're just looking up saying if it finds 7a uh, in C3, then if that is true, we're going to allocate Mrs. Kelly as the class teacher. And if they're not in 7a, if it's something else, so otherwise it's going to be Mr. Foley. Alright, and then close the bracket. So in this case, we're using the equals. If in C3, essentially, if it's exactly 7A, 7A shows there, um, assign Mrs. Kelly. If it's not true, if it's not 7A, otherwise it's going to be Mr. Foley. And press enter. So Mrs. Kelly is uh, the teacher in 7A, and then I can copy down. And where you have 7A, it's Mrs. Kelly, and 7B, it's Mr. Foley. So that is the basics of the if statement. Hope that helps.